welcome to Off and Pacing on Tab Radio Racing and Sport. Tim Walker will be joined by Matt Young and Oliver County as they delve into the form for today's Pinjarra Harness Meeting, as well as an early look at tomorrow's meeting at Gloucester Park. We are Off and Pacing. We certainly are, and it's great to have your company on this Monday morning, the 4th of March, public holiday in March. It means one thing, Pinjarra Cup Day, and it is great to have your company on Off and Pacing today. Tim Walker with you, and as always, joining me down the line this morning, Matt Young, a very good morning to you. Good morning to you, Tim, Ollie, everyone tuned in. Yeah, looking forward to Pinjarra Cup today. And there's uh, an outstanding field, as we've mentioned, and a few scratchings, but a couple of worthy replacements going in. Yeah, absolutely spot on. And we've got Ollie County joining us on the line as well. Ollie, a very good afternoon to you over there in Sydney. Good afternoon, Tim. It's um, great to be on. It's a big day ahead of us today, Pinjarra Cup Day, gents. Michael Brennan is going to be a special guest just after 9.50, we'll have a chat to him about Pinny Tiger, who has more than halved his quote in the Pinjarra Cup. But that will come all in good time because we need to get back to Friday night and have a look at some of the highlights from the program. Of course, we had the sales classics there where the two-year-olds, it was all about Aidan DeCampo. And from a three-year-old point of view, 10 to the dozen was too good for the Colts and Geldings and we saw a filly in Waterloo that is right in the zone at the moment so why don't we rip into it gents will get stuck into a couple of horses to follow and and Ollie you can lead the way here because we're going to start off one away from the classics itself we'll get to them in just a moment but this will lead into Matt as well Jasper Vella Beach gents so Ollie give us your take and then Matt I'll get your thoughts after that as well uh, I thought he was a really good run um, on Friday. He's, he's been racing really well. I, I don't, I'm not sure he's actually gone any better than he has recently. He's got great gate speed. Um, he took the lead early on, and, and they went really, really hard. They went a 36 lead time and then a 28 first quarter, 27 second quarter, and he was probably entitled to tire a bit after that, but he's still stuck on really well. Um, he managed to run a pretty close up third and, and the winner in the end came from a long way back on the fence so it sort of didn't set up very well for him there but he still ran a really game third so I thought he was a force to follow Matt your take on it? Yeah, absolutely agree. I thought uh, he was outstanding to absorb that sort of pressure, which in the past you would say that Jasper Vella Beach isn't known to be able to take that sort of pressure and be able to finish it off. And uh, in a career best mile rate, 154.2, 36 lead time, as Ollie mentioned, but then 28.5, 27.8, so 56.3 for that first half. And then to fend off the challenge of rumour has it and then be able to kick back underneath Wonderful to fly and beat her home. Uh, only horses beating him were I'm a five-star general directly behind him and flying rumour, as mentioned, had that really soft run. It was a pegs race with uh, how quick they were going. It, the horses off the pegs found it quite difficult, but I thought Jasper Vella Beach is definitely one to follow out of that race. All right, so that's one that the boys both agree on. Now, Ollie, I'm going to get to you in just a moment. Here's the closing stages of the two-year-old Philly Sales Classic on Friday night. Copperhead Lady's about to work into the clear high view. Heidi and Winter Wonder gets to the outside and is starting to come home. Better get on Pip, tries to get on terms. Ruby Lou, better get on Pip. Copperhead Lady, Aiden Francis again. Copperhead Lady over the top of them, takes the lead and wins. Copperhead Lady beat, better get on Pip. Beautifully called there by Matt. Of course, Copperhead Lady, too good leading home. A Ryan Bell Quinella there. And Ollie, you were really taken by the performance of the second horse. I just think uh, we'd better better get on Pip. Her first run, her debut, albeit was a bit fortunate that Jax's ideal galloped and she took up the front, but she was still really good um, to fight on there and hold off the challenges late. And then her second run in the heats was outstanding again. She, again, had to do a lot of work. And, and I think this, this run in, in the final was the best yet from her. Not another run in the breeze did, did quite a bit of work worked over leader and then was just picked by the stable mate that had a really soft running behind. So I think we better get on people just keep getting better with racing and, and she's going to be a really nice horse, I think. Another one of the features on the night was the Colts and Gelding Sales Classic and this will be where we get Matt involved with one of his horses to follow. 
quarter. Shaking off the danger for the meantime was 10 to the dozen, but Menem Shane will dig deep and has Grievous around the outside coming up three wide. 10 to the dozen's in front of the straight. Menem Shah on the outside. Grievous makes the line of three. 10 to the dozen in front. Menem Shah trying to get there. 10 to the dozen fighting off Menem Shah who drives late, but in front 10 to the dozen wins. Second was Menem Shah and third got very tight at the line. We had so it was a win master. for Greg and Sky Bond there and their other runners ran third and fourth in the Little Master and then you came along and Matt it was hard not to be taken by the performance of the Little Master yeah, his uh, performance was absolutely outstanding. He came from back in the field, uh, quick last half, 56.2. He was off the track, and just his last 150 metres, he really sizzled through the line. So I thought his performance was uh, one of a horse that's going to win next start, you would imagine. He's uh, really come on after what could be, say, a little bit of a slowish start to the preparation. We know how good he can be, but he went around at the big price on Friday night, and I think uh, he'll be one that caught the eye of a lot of people. But in the same race, Curious Boys won. It's caught my eye the last couple, and I thought the performance again on Friday was full of merit, and I think this horse will be winning one very soon for Kevin Keyes. All right. And, Ollie, you can just leave us with one more horse to follow before we move on to Pinjarra today. On Friday, I thought the run of street appeal was really, really good. Uh, three back, he was quite badly held up, and then two back, he was held up again. But finally, he decided he got a bit of clear running late off, the, off a soft trip, and was able to get home in 27.4. So I think he's really starting to get closer to what he can do. Um, so if he finds a suitable race, I think he, he could be one to follow at odds. All right, so that is Jasper Vella Beach. Better get on Pip Street Appeal for Ollie. Jasper Vella Beach, the little master, curious boy, and post game, the horses to follow for Matt. All right, let's move into our Pinjarra preview. And before we go through and find the best bets for today, it does pay to listen to this segment. So we found out Adelombo under the stars, rich American among the winners last week. So make sure you jot these down, what the boys are about to deliver to you this morning. So we'll, we'll go through your three, Matt, then Ollie, your three before we have a look at the Pinjarra Cup this afternoon. And Matt, you're going to go to race two to give us your first best for today. Yeah, well, I thought Cabochon would be winning race number two. Uh, it should just go around at the shorter quote and get the job done. Not going to tip this one uh, for the punters out there today because it's uh, Blind Freddy could pick this horse. So, look, I'm going to tip the one, go Mario for a place. Nearly flip of the coin odds for the place has been a little bit of juice taken out of it since the markets, ha- markets have gone up with Tab Touch. But at the same time, I thought Go Mario has been a big improver. This preparation's got some good gate speed and looks at a really good place chance, in my opinion in the second, so that was the way I would play race number two. All right, and for those that were listening just a couple of moments ago on on the Sports Daily, yes, absolutely continue on and tell us about Great Great Boulder. Yeah, race four, number seven, Great Great Boulder. He's uh, a horse who's just got so much high speed and I thought uh, Franco Encore obviously looks hard to beat off the inside draw. just thought Great Great Boulder with the smallish field, he would just be too strong for them. So I marked him as the best of the day and I still think he's a pretty good price. Uh, they could overturn each other in in the coming uh, hours into the race. So, look, I'm pretty keen on Grey Grey Boulder. I, th- I think he's a really smart horse. He's got his own little issues, but at the same time, um, I think if he does everything right, he'll be winning that race, race number four. And in race number nine on the program today, we will have a look at this race, which I thought was a really interesting affair. We've got uh, the standing start. Caper, I think Rich Americans come up short enough. I'm going to go the soft option again here and tip a place getter. Skippy's delight. He loves the places. I thought uh, flip of the coin odds about him was really good too. He's uh, placed 50 times in his 94 start career. So that gives you an understanding that flip of the coin odds in a 50-50 battle for placings. I think he can uh, get that job done here. So race nine, number three, Skippy's delight a place. Race two, number one. Uh, go Mario a place and race four number seven great great boulder to win and as my best bet Tim all right so that is for Matt Ollie will bring you in now you're going to kick off with the first of your plays in race number five today which is an intriguing affair as well it must be said there's a few nice horses going around in this that I think are racing better and better each each time they go around I think he's good as gold was has been really good his last two runs with a third and a fourth, and the fourth within a four-year-old feature. I think he's got really good gate speed. 
So that'll give a really good run to Mugatahi, who I think was super first up when he had to work early to keep uh, Louis Rouge uh, out from leading and then got onto his back and, and was really good there to finish off late over the top. So I think off a soft run here, he can he can finish over the top if he's good as gold up the, up the sprint lane. Um, I, I came up with the, the same uh, numbers in race nine. I thought I thought Thompson, sorry, I thought Rich American would be really hard to beat, but I did think Skippy's Delight could run a really good race at odds. He was outstanding to beat Mickey Jet the other day in, in a really sort of just ran them off their legs in the end. So I think he's a cheeky outside chance of uh, knocking them all off here. But the easy way to play it is probably a one by three, mostly a place. And then in, in race 10, I came up with Nancy K, who I thought would get every possible chance to run a place on the back of Inner Wink, who has really good gate speed and, and first up was a really nice winner in good time. I think Nancy K's probably gotten in quite short now, the place. I'd, I'd probably been looking for around $2 um, if I was to get involved there, the, the place. Okay, Nancy Kay, the place there for Ollie in race number 10 to go with Mungatahi in race number five and also Skippy's Delight in race nine, which is where Matt and Ollie both agree there. And Matt also with great, great boulder, race four, number seven and race two, number one, go Mario, the place. All right, gents, let's have a look at the Pinjarra Cup. Thanks to WA Country Builders before we move along to Gloucester Park tomorrow night. So obviously Magnificent Storm and Magnificent, the two scratching. So swing band into barrier number seven and Cordero, who ran a good race on Friday night, is into barrier number nine. Matt, I'll go to you firstly here. How did you see this playing out early? Yeah, well, there's a bit uh, to sort of look at um, in this race. El Capone's got gate speed in his own right. Armour Einstein, it uh, doesn't look like the pegs could be an option for Armour Einstein with uh, those horses off the back line likely to go down there. So they might throw caution to the wind and have a little look. But I think El Capone has got the speed early to hold him. And then you've got Ideal Asian will be coming out as hard as he can. So will Minstrel Laverage Joe might come out hard. He hasn't raced for a little while. Uh, Jules of Lincoln, as we know, will be coming out really hard as well. So I think you can see about four or five horses off the front line getting involved. I have got a sneaky feeling that Jaws of Lincoln might have the speed to get around them, but I've sort of based my selection on Minstrel just because I don't really care where he sits. I think he's in career best form and I think he can uh, win from the breeze. So that's why I went with him. But uh, yeah, it's a really interesting race and I'm interested to get Ollie's take, which uh, my opinion of this race is if there is plenty of speed early, which could lead to a decent lead time for that first lap trying to find positions. It could really bring some of the back markers into the race, i.e. Pinny Tiger, Mighty Ronaldo and Tricky Mickey. Yeah, absolutely. Ollie, I'd be keen to get your thoughts and, and in particular Lavra Joe. What happens? What do you think they'll do with him first up today since that little cameo that he made in the back part of December and early January? I thought it was a really difficult race to, to work out who'd win. Um, really tricky. There's some outstanding horses here. It's, it's a super race, but I agree that I, I thought Minstrel was clearly the hardest to beat, going brilliantly, absolutely flying the horse. I thought he could just about do enough to lead. He all but kicked up under Labra Joe last time and and then galloped. So I think this time Labra Joe first up. I, I think they might have a little look early, but then they maybe don't want to get him over racing ahead of a pretty busy period with, with another ball coming up too. So the, the danger to, to Mitchell leading is probably George Lincoln, as Matt mentioned, but if Mitchell gets any kind of trip here, I, I think he'll be too good for them. I think, as Matt mentioned, the back markers will really come into this if, if a George Lincoln does lead and then gets over racing. So I think Penny Tiger, maybe if he drifts a bit in the market, could be a really good knockout hope off a soft peg strip. What's the sort of price that you'd look to get involved there, Ollie, with Penny Tiger? I think about probably, probably $10, $10. I'd be happy to have something on him. I oh. think any shorter, he needs quite a bit of luck to go his way and he needs a tempo to be on. So you can't really take single digits about him, I'm thinking. All right. It was as much as $19 when the markets did open earlier on. So for Magnificent Storm... A few for those, deductions there now, Tim. Yeah, absolutely there is. So... Um, 
with Magnificent Storm coming out, that's obviously a, a big talking point there. Hopefully, we'll get to see Magnificent Storm in the next week, week and a half in the run-up to the Nullarbor. All right, so we'll leave Pinjarra there and we'll turn our attention to Gloucester Park. Just an early look towards tomorrow night. And, Matt, to you firstly, you're going to target race number four. Yeah, races four and nine for me tomorrow. Looking at uh, the fourth, I actually like the way Stars of Gold's come back and I thought it was a, a really good each-way chance in this race. Colorado Banner's not a horse that can do a huge amount of work in his races. I thought Henwood Bay was just a touch disappointing last start. Uh, Louis Lebeau's racing really well, but I just thought over the middle distance, Stars of Gold's a good front runner. The last two starts have been good uh, and I just I thought he was a really good chance. So happy to be with Stars of Gold on an each-way basis in the fourth and in the last even up the 70 metres or effectively 50 metres I was pretty keen on that's not my gate. Things went wrong last start, a few gear issues. I think this horse is a really good stayer and I think can win the final event the trot race nine number six that's not my gate and race uh, four number one stars of gold but of course as we know it's price dependent so we'll, we'll know more tomorrow on the Sports Daily. Alright make sure you stay tuned in to that preview thanks to Retrovision tomorrow morning from 8.45 and Ollie, you're going to also target race number four. I thought in this race, Hen- Henwood Bay was actually quite a decent run last start in the breeze. I thought before his win at Albany, he'd had a bit of a gap between runs. So he might have needed that run, but he was still really good to breeze and win. And then last start, he, he sat in the breeze again and and wasn't quite good enough. But I thought with a bit of speed out wide, he might be able to either force his way to the top or ensure he doesn't mislead us back. And from there... Either way, I think he's a really good hope in this. So I thought Henwood Bay would be hard to beat. And in race five, I thought this looked a really good race for Rocker Ball to get back in the in the winner's circle. He, he was really good recently off a of Peg's trip where he flashed late at, um, at a Bond horse and, and couldn't quite win, but I thought he was really good there. And then he was maybe a touch disappointing too back when the race set up well for him to run on and, and he couldn't quite run on. But last start... He was really good flashing to third late. So I thought he could do enough to hold the lead over Ultra Red. And and then if he does hold the lead, I think that takes him a long way to winning. All right. So tomorrow night for Matt, he is with race four, number one, Stars of Gold, and race nine, number six, That's Not My Gate. Ollie with race four, number two, taking Matt on there with Henwood Bay, and then race five, number one, Rockable. All right. Well, Matt, of course, today we'll be able to see all of your coverage of Pinjarra Cup Day on the Trots WA X page. There'll be plenty of interviews and of course plenty of build up to the feature race itself the Pinjarra Cup, the $50,000 Pinjarra Cup. Yeah, looking forward to it and going to try and get uh, a comment or at least an interview from every participant in the Pinjarra Cup as well to uh, give that the the real good lead in. So uh, no doubt, well, we've got Justin Prentice, he'll have three runners in the race and also uh, Greg Bond's got three runners in the race. So that takes a large portion of it, but we'll be getting a word from everyone involved in the Pinjarra Cup today. All right, you have a good afternoon down there. Cheers. There is Matt Young with his look at everything coming up over the next 24 to 48 hours. And, Ollie, you enjoy all of the action as well. Thanks for being a part of Off and Pacing once again today. Thanks, Tim. There is Ollie County and also Matt Young with their look at the next couple of days. Of course, if you'd like a recap of their selections, you'll be able to catch that on the podcast at tabradio.com.au. You can also jump on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Stay tuned to Off and Pacing because on the other side of the break, he's got Pinny Tiger in the Pinjarra Cup this afternoon. Michael Brennan is going to join us to give us the very latest there. You're on Off and Pacing on this Monday morning. On Tab Radio Racing and Sport, this is Off and Pacing. And then Al Capone around the turn. He's holding Penny Tiger back. It leads Franco Ecuador. And then classic choice and armor Reinstein. Penny Tiger clear. Franco Ecuador is trying very hard. Penny Tiger the leader. Franco Ecuador won't get there. And Penny Tiger does it all the way. By four metres to Franco Ecuador and six metres Al Capone. Two metres away. That was the last Reinstein out performance of Penny Tiger last Friday week at Gloucester Park. Able to beat... Al Capone and also Franco Ecuador on that occasion. He'll meet with Al Capone once again in this afternoon's $50,000 WA Country Builders Pinjarra Cup. And it's great to have Michael Brennan with us on the line. A very good morning to you, Michael. 
Morning, Tim. How are you, pal? We're going very, very well in here. Of course, it's a big afternoon on the way. We've got a lot to look forward to with Pinny Tiger going around in the $50,000 event today. How's he going? Yeah, super, Tim. Couldn't be happy with him, mate. We can't do any more now. Um, sort of pretty much all up to Vokey from here. Um, you know, it's a tricky little draw, but it's um, it's an ideal ideal draw for a horse like him. Yeah, absolutely it is. So tricky, ideal. It's all packaged up in one there. When you first saw it, what was your immediate reaction and seeing what's going to happen, what may happen on the front line there? Um, yeah, the first reaction was better than 12. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, um, but... Look, Al Capone's got enough gate speed to hold most of them, I would have thought, and probably Ryan just picks the one he wants to sit on. Um, you know, uh, yeah, at worst, we're probably going to be four back defence, but we know at Pinjarra and these Pinjarra Cups, um, they're generally high-tempo races where they do fan, and, um, you know, like, he, this is a horse that um, he just takes gaps. He, he loves charging through holes, so... Um, yeah, just hopefully hopefully the gaps open up for him somewhere between the 400 and the 200. And just the way that he is going at the moment, of course, it, it feels like that that Sydney campaign last year is going to be the making of this horse and that he he can now really become a consistent free-for-all a week in, week out. Is that the way that you view it as well? Yeah, absolutely, mate. He, um, you know, last prep, nothing sort of went right. We had to rush him back because they changed the dates. Um, for the pacing cup and then just yeah we have we're having to do things that we didn't really want to do uh, but it's this time in we've been able to um just give him a real good base drive him drive him the way that we think's best for him just to to continually build throughout his prep and he hasn't had the earplugs pulled yet so um that's been ideal in the first three runs for him um so he's um you know he's getting close to peak fitness and to be honest i don't think the horse has ever been better that is good to hear. We're having a chat to Michael Brennan in the build-up to Pinny Tiger running in this afternoon's WA Country Builders Pinjarra Cup. So talk about him not going any better and working towards peak fitness. Are you expecting that he'll be at that peak fitness, if not today, maybe in the next couple of starts and hopefully building up towards the Fremantle Cup launching pad? Yeah, I think so, mate. He's, you know, as I said, he's, he's had a really good base this time. Um, so, you know, we don't have to do much between clean runs with him because he's such a natural athlete. Um, and he just, he, he looks magnificent. He's developed again. He's a big, strong, powerful brute. And, um, you know, and I think he's just that little bit more mature now too. You know, we, we saw him, you know, at last, the last start, just be able to, to run the gate and then just back right off and, and settle and relax. And, you know, and he's even better in behind when he's, when he's got, when he's got a helmet to follow, he's super relaxed. And then, you know, when when those gats open up, then he's got that. He hasn't expended the energy to to then let down with. You know, I think he's one of the fastest point to point horses in the state. All right, that is a, a good report on Penny Tiger, who goes around in the Pinjarra Cup today. In your mind, has the market got it right? Minstrel, the hardest to beat. Oh, definitely. Yeah, it's a, yeah. Obviously, it's a real shame that Stormy's yep. Stormy's not there. Um, I'm, a, I'm a harness racing fan first, and the trainer. Train a second. Um, you just love seeing those good horses to go around, and hopefully he'll be back very soon. So that's taken a little bit of a gloss away from the cart, but in saying that, it's a really, really, really good race. Um, you know, there's not a horse going better than Minstrel at the moment. He's obviously the one to beat. It'd be almost a fitting result, wouldn't it? Pinny Tiger winning a Pinjarra Cup. It just seems a, a match made in heaven. It does, doesn't it? And especially considering, you know, the, the likes of, of Kim Tucky and, and Dave Cabassi um, and even myself and Vokey have all been on the committee at the Pinjarra Harness Racing Club. So, um, yeah, I think uh, hopefully the racing gods are shining on us and, um, you know, there's a, there's a big Pinjarra base of owners in this guy. So, yeah, yeah hopefully it, it, uh, it does seem very fitting that, um, you know, hopefully he can just run his best race and get some luck. All right, a couple of each-way chances as well, other each-way chances as well on the program. The first of those under the stars who's come back in good nick in race number five. This is a, a good race and we were just speaking to Ollie and Matt about it. She, if a bit of luck goes under the stars' way, is there any reason why we couldn't see another win on the board here? No, definitely not, Tim. He's, um, he's airborne this time. Um, he's a big dopey bugger, and um, it's taken a little while for the penny to drop, but it certainly dropped this time in. Um, you know, he can't be any more impressive than he has been. Um, be interesting to see what Shannon does with um, he's good as gold, you know, whether he decides to sit on us and put Mungatahi three-back defence um, at Pinjarra. 
or whether he wants to hold the front um, and, you know, how, how aggressive Vokey is. Um, he will leave, once again, leave it up to Vokey. He knows a horse as well as I do, so um, he's definitely an each-way chance in that race for sure. And what about Miss Boudicca in race number six as well? Again, a, a tricky assignment that's in front of her, but looks to have come back in pretty good nick. Yeah, no, first up run was really good. Second up had no luck at all. Um, but, yeah, it does, does look like a... There's probably a little bit of speed early in that race. Um, she loves Pinjaro. She loves the big open spaces there, and it gives her a chance to, to balance up and wind up into a race. So the smaller field suits, you know, there's only nine in it now. Um, so if she can get a good trail into the race, um, she'll be the one storming home late. You know, she showed that in that lightning lap race. It's, um, you know, she, she's, she's quite tough, and she's, she has still got a little bit of speed in the old legs. So, um, you know, if, if, the, if the race is run upside down, I think she'll be playing a, a really big part in the finish if it's, you know, if it's, Tempo related, then she's probably going to struggle a little bit because she's going to be coming from last. All right. Well, good luck today. Hopefully, we can see Pinny Tiger make the most of the gaps when they do present this afternoon in the big one. And it'd be great to see him get a win on the board. He certainly looks to be going as well as ever. And listening to you this morning, I don't think there's any reason to think otherwise. Thanks for your time today. Thanks, Timmy. I just want to send a special shout out to Matty Young. Uh, I thought his calling on Friday night was absolutely outstanding, mate. Um, the, the industry is in real good hands when we've got guys like Matty, uh, Matty in it. So I just, yeah, I was really proud of him as one of his mates to, to hear the way he called those Group 1 races. And, yeah, so just kudos to Matthew. Good job, well done, son. Yep, echo those sentiments on a big night. He certainly rose to the occasion, did Matt Young. And clearly I'm a little bit biased sitting alongside him and working alongside him each and every Friday morning and also Monday morning here on the Retrovision Gloucester Park preview and off and pacing, but absolutely echo those sentiments. Going along beautifully is Matt Young and tipping winners galore. There is Michael Brennan with us on the program. All right, that brings us to the end of off and pacing on this Monday morning. Hopefully there's a winner in and among it for you today at Pinjarra. Of course, Matt with race two, number one, place heavy there. Race four, number seven, great, great bowl to his best. Also keen on Skippy's delight, the place in race number nine, Ollie Keen on Mungatahi, race five at number eight. Nancy Kay, the place in race ten, and he's echoing the sentiments of Matt Young with Skippy's delight there. We'll be back again next Monday morning. We'll have Matt and Ollie on the program. I'll be away for a couple of weeks, so Matt and Ollie will still be on the program to find you all of the winners, and I'll look forward to having your company again in a couple of weeks' time here on Off and Pacing. Enjoy Pinjarra Cup Day today. And, of course, Gloucester Park tomorrow night. A busy week of harness racing ahead. That's been Off and Pacing. We'll catch you again next week. What are you really gambling with? For free and confidential support, visit gamblinghelpline.org.au.